Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens Motorsports. So we're gonna be doing a fuel cell in our 330 CIM3 Frankenstein car that we've built here. Before we get into that, make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Make sure that you are also following us on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports, and make sure you are following this car's Instagram, which is Nikki underscore nightmare 46. All that will be linked in the description below. Also in the description below, make sure to check out the build list for this car and then I'll also have the 330 CI build list down there because we'll be talking about both cars today. Every single upgrade that's like this is on that build list and it's just a Google Doc sheet and you can go through and you can see absolutely every single piece that's gone into both of these cars. Even some things that sometimes you don't get to see on camera where it wasn't a big enough thing to be on a video or I didn't think it was important enough to show anybody. Those build lists are super cool. I've had a lot of people asking for them so make sure you check that out in the description as well. So, uh, fuel cell. Um, now, I did do a lot of research on what to do about a fuel cell. And uh, real quick, before we unbox all this, I wanna talk about why we're doing a fuel cell. Uh, one, race car. Number two is because the stock fuel systems tend to have reliability issues. They're made out of a lot of component pieces. And now these cars are getting 20 some odd years old a lot of those components, those plastics are starting to break down. I don't think we had any issues with the fuel system that was in the green car that we bought as a donor for this. Uh, I haven't had any issues with my 330CI, the, the white race car. But um, when you start pulling a system out and then putting it into another car, the odds of you breaking something is fairly high. We broke something small on the wagon. It was a very small, easy fix to do. It cost me more time than it did money. But this setup right here is gonna give us a couple advantages that the stock tank doesn't do. Now, one of them is weight and location. So the stock fuel tank on this car is actually really low, and that's, that's fine. What we're hoping will happen, because these cars are gonna be very front heavy. I'm sure my white race car is all messed up on its weight distribution because basically most of the back gets stripped out and the front, you still have an engine in the front. It's not like you can remove that and then you add a supercharger to it and those can be uh, 60 pounds, 70 pounds, depending on what supercharger you buy. What's gonna be kind of cool about this is it's gonna be moved to the trunk, which puts the weight further back to help counteract it. And then it's gonna go up about a foot, so where your stock tank is down, saddled over your uh, drive shaft, this one's gonna be back further and then up. So this whole setup right here, I'll be straightforward with you, cost me about 540 bucks. So you've got um, a 10 gallon fuel cell here, which is about three gallons less than the car initially held. This does have the foam inside it already. And we'll talk about that in a second. Then we have our fuel filter, fuel pump, and then our fuel pressure regulator. And I was told by several people who have really been in the racing world that honestly, when it comes to the cheap tanks you see on eBay, there's nothing really wrong with those. The part that you've gotta be careful of is all your fittings, and your hoses, which a lot of this kit here, and we'll go over, we'll go over all this, so I wanna unbox it all and show you what's going on. Um, you don't wanna go super cheap on your fittings, you don't wanna go cheap on your hoses, and then the foam that goes inside the fuel cell, if you're not careful, you can actually buy foam that will break down with the fuel. I've never done this before, so uh, a lot of the videos don't show a lot of stuff. So I've, I've been talking for a long time. Let's get this stuff unboxed and uh, start getting into the car.
All right, so there's just the fuel cell sitting in there. We did remove everything. This car is gonna be absolutely stripped out when we're all said and done. Um, I just haven't taken the carpets out of the back of the trunk yet, but for now, it's actually, back here, it's basically done. There's not really much else to remove. The floor back here isn't as flat as I thought it would be, but it's actually a good thing. So the center of this dips down right here. You can see that it's, it's not flat across the bottom. So if you put this on a flat surface, this actually sits up. Well, where that dips down, I think we can actually just use that. I mean, that, that fits so perfect in there, it's kind of crazy. So we'll put some bolt holes down. Uh, I might try to flatten this out or something. But here is one of the other things I wanted to point out. Um, kind of looks like this car has been in a rear end collision at some point, which doesn't surprise me. I think I kind of figured the bumper had been repainted. Well, or painted at a shop, so this, this isn't the nicest paint. And then um, this probably isn't the bumper that was on when that happened. I mean, that's, in order to get something like that, you're probably breaking the bumper. So, just kind of interesting. Um, I found this bolt that was missing. Uh, it was uh, uh, back in here, which means that it was underneath the um, insulation that was back here. So, just kind of interesting. Thought I'd point that out, and uh, I'm happy the way that this looks. Now, let me move the fuel cell out of the way real quick, and I'll show you what's going on underneath it that we gotta do. So, you see those two, like, hook things? Um, not sure what their function is other than they poked up through this and kept it from sliding around back there. Uh, so those are probably going to have to get removed so they're not touching the bottom of the fuel cell. I'm going to look up and see what kind of regulations I need to make sure that we're hitting with securing the fuel cell down. I know there is some rules around it. I don't do a lot of like spec racing or anything like that. Uh, mostly like... For a while there, I was doing a lot of local autocross and we were gonna start really doing some track stuff, but we had a certain illness come over the United States. So that uh, track time actually physically going somewhere was put on hold, but that will definitely be changing this summer. Here's the regulator, and it looks like there's plenty of room. Well, the reason it looks like there's plenty of room is because the intake's not on, and then I need to be careful because we are planning on doing a supercharger, so a lot of this area right here is gonna be full of supercharger parts. In fact, um, there's pictures that show the elbow coming through here where you have to take, you basically have to grind that off, and the elbow comes right up through here, and then these two little nut certs that are in there, the elbow comes right through here. And then you can relocate this, but the intake goes down through this hole right here. So it's not like you can just move that down. Um, yeah, and then over here, because it's an M3, I guess maybe, I don't know why this is any different, but over here, all of your ABS controls and lines sit right there, where on the non-Ms, this is all open right here. So, yeah, I mean, I can set it against here, but you're getting really close to the exhaust manifold, and at some point, we're wanting to turbo the car. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to do, I, I don't want to corner myself and have to redesign things later. I want to do it right the first time, and then whether we keep the supercharger on forever or run that a year and then turbocharge it, no matter where I put that regulator, 
it needs to be able to work. And I can sit it back in there uh, where the heater core is. So if we go over here to my race car, we'll go take a little walk here real quick. We can see back in there, we can see the hard motorsport plate, the delete plate. There is plenty of room to sit this. That's the next thing is, if I do that, then it's sitting at an angle. And I can't tell if this needs to sit perfectly upright or what. If it's back there, it's gonna be difficult to get at your adjuster here. All right, everybody, so this is our final iteration of how everything is going to sit. Now, not everything's bolted down quite just yet, but the only thing I've gotta do is tighten some fittings and um, bolt some things down. So I've decided that back here is probably not the best idea for the fuel pump and filters. So they are actually just sitting on the other side of the fuel cell. We'll go see that in just a second. Um, but back here, I'm gonna have a 45. I did have to buy those 45s. I did buy a few things, so here's some AN10 to AN6. I'll have that all linked in the description below. But we will have a 45, you can see the hose right there, going to our pre-filter, our pump, which is just behind there, and then our post filter right there. It goes right up into here through that passage. Now this passage is nice because it has a piece of foam because there's other items running through that same passageway. And we'll take a look at that. So it is just behind that seat belt. You can see that piece of foam. You can see the hoses coming out of there. This goes down into the original access port for the fuel tank. I just cut some holes in that gasket there. And then what's nice about that is I have both hoses running through that. So here is the pump and the other filters just over there on the other side of that. They go down underneath the car and they run basically where the old fuel system used to sit. They do not cross over the exhaust. They do not cross over the drive shaft. They come up right here, which is where the old system used to come up. And they go over to the other side of the engine, just on the top of the transmission. Once they get over here, you can see our fuel pressure regulator. This is not where I wanted to have it, but I could not seem to find another spot that gave me easy access and that it wasn't like leaning over on its side. You want this as close to the engine as you can get it and preferably you want it sitting upright like this. So we've got our in line here and then we have our out on the bottom and then we have our line going to our fuel rail. And as you can tell, the fuel rail is actually over here. That's because we need to talk about this in just a second. Because I kept the hoses up high, but they are on the header side as I'm probably gonna wrap them, and see if I can't keep the heat from the exhaust off of it. Now, this is all 3 8 inch. This hose here, all of a sudden, I can't, it's evading my mind what size this is, but it's just the size down. The reason for that being is I've got this quick disconnect here. And the original hose, which is right here next to it, has a quick disconnect on it. And this is nice because um, I'm not having to modify the fuel rail at all. I don't have to worry about anything else. I just click that back on, we're good to go. But this, the one they had here locally, was different size than this. So what I did was I got a hose that was just slightly too small for the AN6. I put this system together and then I took a pair of needle nose pliers and then I stretched the hose out. So you put these in, the hose on it and then you open it up and you just do that a few times until it slips over this and then I'm gonna crimp it on there. Um, you do have to have quite a bit extra hose so that it can go through here, which I made a passage there and then a cutout here. You can see the cutout right there. So the hose can pass through there. Uh, it's gotta kinda loop back. So I try to get it as close to the engine as possible, to the fuel rail as possible, but this is, this is where it ended up having to be. And I think actually, based on this hose length here, that it's about where it used to sit. Because initially, the fuel regulator used to sit underneath the driver's side seat roughly, and then it would come up to here. So it's probably about the same distance to the fuel rail as the original one is. There you go. I really appreciate everybody so much for watching. Everything we use, all of the dimensions, all that will be linked in the description below. We are so close to starting the car. I wish I could do it on this video, but we're just not able to. So that's how I ran the fuel system. Please, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I really appreciate everybody for watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.